Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I am so excited to bring you the steps I took to create this beautiful cup. This cup was created out of sheer desperation. Um, my sister called me and needed a cup for back to school and all I was given was that the teacher liked the color pink and elephants. So this is what I created. As always, all the materials I'll be using will be linked below in the description. And there might be a snazzy old coupon code to save you some coin if you're interested. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. This is a 30 ounce skinny from Craft Haven and I prepped it, took it outside and spray painted it in a swirl pattern. I didn't video it because the camera fell over and it wasn't cute, but the four colors I used in the swirl were magenta, candy pink, prickly pear, and coral. Um, and I can link above to the like a purple cup that I did with the same technique for spray painting. I just didn't have the video of it here. For this design, we're gonna be using the Tacket method, and I showed you just a couple seconds before that I used a flat brush, and it's probably about three quarters of an inch wide, and I just grab the bottle of Tacket and apply it straight to the cup. Now, I know a lot of people like to dilute the Tacket, and if that works for you, great. I have just found that I like it better when I apply it straight to the cup. I get more of an even, consistent coat and I just feel like the glitter adheres to it better. So I also always do two layers of tacket. So here I'm just applying the first tacket layer. <laughs> wow, I'm saying tacket a lot. Um, don't forget to get the bottom of the cup, but then I'll let it dry uh, in between layers. So you can see my heat gun is right there in the corner of the screen, but I just like to apply thin, even coats and if you're in a hurry, you can take your heat gun and dry it between coats. One thing I will caution and ask me how I know, don't hold your heat gun too close to the tacket because what happens is it won't necessarily burn it, but it bubbles up and you can't get that texture out of the cup. I know I did a fill bit, but I did do two coats of tacket and then I came in with Opalite from Glitter Heart Company. This is a really, really beautiful, I would say more of a medium cut opal glitter. And <laughs> I've learned this like with the opal glitters, usually I just kind of like douse the cup, I guess is the best way to put it. But I wanted to make sure that I got the really great coverage because this isn't opal. So you will see it if you don't get the coverage. So I just took my time applying the glitter. Of course, I sped it up here so we aren't spending our whole day watching me apply glitter to a cup. But just making sure that I get everything covered and I'm really happy with how the glitter is going over the top of the paint. So just taking my time. Um, you don't have to worry about working time. Granted, you don't need to take like four hours to cover your cup, but you don't have to worry about the tacket being untacky anymore <laughs> um so take your time until you're comfortable with the coverage and then we're going to move into the most satisfying and fun parts of the tacket method also don't forget your bottoms um i think it's really important to take the time to also apply glitter to the bottom of the cup with the tacket method it just makes for a more cohesive design and it really makes your cups come out better so don't forget your bottoms all right i'm just kidding <laughs> Now, this is where I really get my sense of satisfaction <laughs> with the Tacket method and ends with the burnishing of the glitter down into the adhesive that we had used. So I would like to say that I use medium pressure, so nothing too hard because you don't want to rip all of the glitter off of the cup, but nothing too soft to where you're just wasting your entire time going over it and you're just having to do it over and over again. So I use my pointer finger and again with that medium pressure just taking my time pushing the glitter down and you can see here where i've already pushed the glitter down and how it gives it that beautiful sheen over the spray paint that's what's kind of wonderful about using opals over spray paint is it doesn't take away from the color of the spray paint i just feel like it augments it it just makes it a lot prettier and i I'm a huge fan of this method. I've actually done two other cups utilizing Tacket tutorials, and I can link those in the description below. But I am just a huge fan, and the way that this opalite goes over the colors, it's just absolutely beautiful. I'm just continuing to burnish the cup, and I know it makes it seem like this process is long, but it really 
it goes by pretty quickly and you see the results instantaneously so i don't mind it but also it wouldn't be one of my tutorials if i was not on the struggle bus for at least part of it so i apologize that the majority of the cup is out of frame as i'm trying to show you this process but it's pretty straightforward and look at that shine of the opalite i absolutely love it after I was done with the opalite tacket, I took it outside and I spray coated it with clear gloss spray paint. It was just the brand Rust-Oleum two times Pray and primer, but I like to do this because I've had a couple of cups where I'll come in for the second layer of tacket and the glitter moves on me, and I would prefer to avoid that. So one layer, one quick layer of clear spray paint took care of that. So I just wanted to share that hack with you as we move on with this cup. So again, here we're just applying um, another thin layer of Tacket. Granted, I will do two layers of Tacket before I go in, but the spoiler alert here is the reason why I'm doing this is I actually chose to use a different color glitter than we used um, the first route. So we used Opalite the first time, and this time we're gonna use a finer cut to go over the top of it. And I can't wait for you guys to see the difference it makes by just choosing a second cut of glitter. Now, I do this because I think the two layers of tacket just really add dimension to the cup. And you can really see the difference when you do this. We could have stopped and just did the one layer of tacket and the one layer of glitter, and you can choose to do so. I just like going that extra mile with my cups and adding some more oomph to it. And I think it really shows in the final result of the cup. So even on the second layer of Tacket um, over the other glitter, you can feel free to use your heat gun to dry the layer of Tacket before you moved into the next glitter. So the next glitter again is a finer cut opal. This is called White Pearl, but it actually has a little bit of a gold sheen to it. So you'll see here, this has got, a, when it reflects the light, the other opalite has more of like a, like a blue green sheen to it. And you'll see here with this glitter, it's definitely got more of a gold tone to it. So with the overall look that I was going for, I was so happy with how this white pearl turned out over the top of the opalite. It just, I'll, you'll see it here in a second. I just was super happy with how this came out. So here I'm just kind of taking my time, but going a little bit faster than the other glitter, just applying this layer. Um, this white actually has great coverage. I mean, you can really see it here for a finer glitter. I was really, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm surprised because honestly, every time I use Glitter Heart Company glitters, I get wonderful coverage, but it was pretty nice that this went on so nicely and it would just, I can't wait for you guys to see what happens when we start burnishing. One thing to note, I know a couple of cup makers don't like to reuse glitter after you burnish it with the Tacket method. I do, I've never had an issue, but whatever, again, whatever you're comfortable with and whatever floats your boat. So in this shot, you can really, really see that beautiful gold sheen that this glitter gives off. It's not too green, it's not too blue. It just really complements the pink colors underneath it. And with the original Opalite, I just love this combination. So I will mention that this one is a little tougher to burnish. I don't know if it's because I have the multiple layers on it or if it's because it was too humid out, but um, I ended up pushing it down, but also using my full hand to really, really, really make sure that I got that glitter down the way I liked it. But you can see here just how absolutely amazing that color is over the opalite and then also just like the spray paint colors. It's exactly the hue of pink that I wanted for this design. One thing I'm trying to show here and the reason why I left this in is don't be afraid to move your cup around to get all of the glitter burnished so you don't have weird reflective spots that don't lay flat. Move it around, make sure it's smooth until you're happy with it and I promise it's gonna make for a better result in the long run. Once I was happy with the burnishing, I took it outside and I spray sealed it twice with clear gloss spray paint. And then we moved in to the amazing next. So since I was on a tighter timeline with this, I wanted to show you how I got the glitter detail around the top and the bottom edges of the cup. And how I did this was by applying this glitter mix directly into my epoxy. Now, this glitter mix, I literally did 
two, three years ago. And it was all using all really, ch not cheap, but just different glitters from Michaels and Walmart. I can try and replicate it and tell you guys how I got to it. But literally, it was just something that I had mixed when I first started doing cups. So um, it's really, really beautiful. But I'm sorry, I can't list a link to where I specifically got it. But what I want to show you here is I apply the glitter into the medicine cup. Granted, I used about 10 mLs of a little extra ink epoxy, poured enough glitter to cover the top of the medicine cup, like so where the epoxy is on the top, covering that and just, I would say maybe about an eighth of an inch of glitter on top, mix it up and then I let it sit. The next thing that you want to do, and this is super important, is you want to do a thin layer of epoxy over the whole cup like you see me doing here. I used probably about 20 mLs of a little extra ink epoxy to get the coverage I wanted, but making sure that I'm taking my time, that the epoxy is nice and even, then you come in with a gloved finger and just apply the glitter epoxy mix where you want it. What this does is since this is chunkier glitter, and granted there's a bunch of different cuts in there, it really cuts down on the number of layer of epoxy you need to cover this glitter. It's just a great hack. I can't say that I'm the first one to come up with this. Um, Vanessa with VMD Designs, she does this a lot. And it probably took me watching about six of her tutorials to realize, hey, she's really on to something. <laughs> so I'm not taking credit. I just, that's what I've found when I'm in a pickle or if I just want to do this detail, um, add the glitter to epoxy and it just, it really speeds up the number of steps that you need to do to get this beautiful, results with your cups. Now, there isn't any rhyme or reason to how I applied this glitter. I was really, really inspired with this design from the saris in India. So those are the dresses, I wouldn't say dresses, but just like the traditional um, outfit that women wear there. So it, I really wanted it to be whimsical, super colorful. So I just applied the glitter every which way. I got some in the middle, but really spending most of my time focusing at the bottom and the top of the cup. I did apply this glitter mix to the very, very bottom of it. So that way you had that color that just kind of flowed over to the side, over the sides and down across the bottom of the cup. So just take your time. There isn't a rhyme or reason to doing this. It's just whatever you think is beautiful because this is a piece of art and it's your design. So <laughs> I just want to share how I use the different elements to bring this cup to life. Now, this elephant SVG is an SVG that I've literally had for years. I think I got it from Creative Fabrica. I will try and link it below, but it was one that was just kind of in my repertoire. Pulled it out because this teacher loves elephants, um, but I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where it came from. But I weeded it out. I used two different vinyls. I will link those below. And then I came in with CC DIY's Quick Coat to really make sure that I sealed the elephant down because there are so many intricacies with that mandala design that I really, really, really wanted to make sure that I did not have any of that vinyl lift and then we're in a bad spot. The next thing I did after I did the quick coat and granted I'm behind what I'm doing in the video so I apologize is I mixed up 20 mLs of a little extra ink epoxy and I came in and applied not I would say a generous not a flood coat of epoxy over the top of it um, to really make sure that I got great coverage now since we use the mixing glitter into the epoxy I really didn't need that much epoxy it laid down flat it what didn't have any of the odd bumps that you get sometimes with chunky glitter when you're applying it to a cup so i highly recommend this technique if you're looking for this kind of sparingly glitter touch um, as you're going through your designs i took my time applying the epoxy just to make sure that i had coverage over the glitter and then also the decal because of how intricate it really was with that mandala design one of my favorite things about ALE, granted <laughs> there's a bunch, is that you don't have a lot of the micro bubble problems that you have with other blends. So I only needed a quick torch over the decal and that was it. Like I really didn't even, I mean over the decal I did need to torch it, but anywhere else there was nothing. There was no issues whatsoever. 
this cup only needed two final coats and then it was done and I cannot get over how this came together and so quickly to have such an outstanding outcome. <laughs> I'm not saying that because it's my cup, but this is really, really my colors. I just love how the spray paint underneath adds depth, the mandala design of the elephant, and just the colors. I know I keep on saying the colors, but they just pop, and I'm so obsessed with how this came out. I hope you found this tutorial inspirational, and if you have any questions on any of the techniques I used, please feel free to reach out. Whether it be social media or here on YouTube, I really try to get back to everybody. If you liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so you can see all of my future tutorials. And also, if you ring the bell, you'll get notifications every time there's an update. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Love you. Bye.